Now we're going to look at a technique called wave shaping. And the idea is that we can take a waveform and change its shape. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use what's called a transfer function. And so we can take a signal and apply a transfer function to each of the values of that signal. So we're going to try it with a sine wave. Um, first, let me go through some of the structure of this patch. So here we have two different wavetables. Um, we have one called xfer for transfer. That's our transfer function. And then this is just a um, visualization of the resultant waveform. So let's look at how we write to that transfer table. First, we have a linear function. We receive a value from this select. Um, let's select is sending a bang. Uh, we have a trigger here. We're using this object called until. And what that does is it it's essentially a loop. So we have a counter structure here that we've seen before. So, so the trigger sets the counter to zero. So triggers execute right to left. So first it sets this to zero and then it gives this object called until a value of 258. And so until is going to send out a series of bangs until it reaches that value. So we have a counter here that executes a lot more quickly, um, as quickly as our computer will let it, um, which is, is going to be really fast. So we're going to build a table value by value. So until we reach, reach this value, output a new value. Um, so we're our counter, we're outputting 0 through 258. And then each of those values, one after the other, we're doing a calculation on it to scale it to the table itself. And so this select triggers one or the other. So a linear transfer function is going to look like that. So the same thing that we get in, we're going to get out. And we hear that. And so we can see a, a normal sine wave shape. And we heard a little sine wave ping there. Now, this other function does the same thing. We need different values to scale it to the size of this table. Um, but then we're using an exponential tangent, um, which we can graph that and see what that shape looks like. And in the middle, it's kind of close to a line, but it slopes at the bottom and top of the curve there. And what that does is it's going to squash higher amplitude sounds so that any sound that you pass through this transfer function is going to distort when it gets louder, but be close to normal at low amplitudes. Oftentimes that's a good thing because na lots of natural sounds, you know, naturally add harmonics, um, which is what distortion does when the sounds are louder than when they're softer. So you get more harmonics with a louder sound. And so let's do that same ping through the transfer function and see what the output wave looks like and sounds like. And you can see that sounds more like a square wave there. Um, at softer amplitudes, we would hear it and it would, it would sound more like a pure sine wave. So only at the higher amplitudes does this particular transfer function distort that wave. Now, we can try all different kinds of expressions here um, and then, you know, try to do 
a little arithmetic to scale it so that it fits in our table for the number of points that we need. Um, but we can also draw different kinds of transfer functions and see what happens. So we're taking a sine wave and distorting it through that transfer function that we've created. So we can create different kinds of distortions. And of course, we don't have to just run sine waves through these. Any signal we can run through a transfer function um, and get interesting transformations out of it.